Hi, everybody. Welcome to Around the Table Yarns. This is Crochet Sock for Project Monday. Uh, Roxanne now has heard this three times because she was here this morning and she was here for my first screw up recording. So we're going through it again. <laughs> but I think we've got all the pieces and parts working. Um, the pattern we're using is Basic Toe Up Crochet Socks by Nicole Cormier. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it is a highly recommended pattern. Um, from other people who do a lot of crochet work, I've seen this pattern listed as a good option to try. And um, lots of projects have been done on Ravelry, and I always read through those notes, and it got really good reviews. So I figured this was a good, and I liked that it was free, and it had good reviews. A good pattern to start. And I would say that this is really more of a recipe than a pattern. She gives us some guidelines, um, and some good guidelines. But there's there's room for some creativity if you want to get creative with your stitches. And there's room to um, adjust the shaping so that it really fits your foot. OK, so for this project, you are going to need some sock yarn. We are using fingering weight sock yarn. Um, I'm using Sheepjus Metropolis. These come in 50 gram balls. And I so I will need two of them because you need 100 grams of sock yarn. Um, you can use uh, a skein of 100 gram sock yarn, or you can use bits and pieces and make it a scrappy sock. There's, you're just gonna need probably at least 100 grams. If you want them taller, you're going to need more than 100 grams. I'm, I'm hoping that these socks are gonna be past my ankle, up into like the lower calf is where I'm aiming for this. That's kind of like where I like my socks. Um, you can spread out your sock yarn a little bit by making the cuff at the top or the heel or the toes in a, in a coordinating color. So you can do it that way too. Um, if, if you've got some bits you want to put together. So hundred grams of sock yarn. You're also going to need two, uh, removable stitch markers. I suggest two different colors. Um, and you'll see why in just a minute. I like this kind that are snug. They'll stay on my stitch, <clears throat> but I, they're easy to pull off and on because you're going to have to move these markers every round. And that's going to get tiresome if you're having to use a, a locking stitch marker and unlock it and lock it and unlock it and lock it. So this is what I recommend for this. And I do like these that are, uh, that are nice and tight right here in the join because they stay on. OK, but they come off when you want them to. We're also going to need a tape measure because we're going to need to measure our foot to get an accurate sock to fit. Um, if you are making these for somebody else, she does have some guidelines in here for um, sizes. So you can kind of make a guess. But if you're making it for yourself, take the two seconds it literally will take for us to measure our foot. And a crochet hook. Which crochet hook will depend on a couple of things. It will depend on how firm you want your fabric to be for your sock or how loose you want it to be um, and how close it is to the gauge that's listed. So I suggest starting with the gauge that's listed unless you already know you are a really tight crocheter or a really loose crocheter. Or you've had a lot of experience using, and we're going to be using single crochet stitches, that you know your single crochet stitches are really, really tight. So maybe go up a hook size just to start, okay? We are going to make a gauge swatch. And she recommends in the gauge swatch that you just start the pattern. It is a toe up pattern, which means we're going to start with the toe of the sock. And then we're going to move through the foot. We're going to make a heel. We're going to make a leg. And then we're going to make the cuff at the top. So by making the toe of the sock, we were, are able to check our gauge. And if our gauge is on and we like the, the fabric firmness or the density of the fabric, we can just keep going. If we don't, then we can pull it out and start over. But if it's in the right spot, if it's the right fabric, then you're good to go and you don't have to start a second thing. So I recommend doing it this way. And it gets you a little practice in how we start this toe up sock right here in the center. Okay. So I think I now have said everything twice. 
<laughs> we're back to where we started. Um, and let's move to the camera and take a look at, this is where I had trouble last time, and look at the pattern. Yay. Okay, so basic toe up socks. Again, here's her name, Nicole Cormier. I would say this is a fairly wordy pattern. It is one, two, three, four, five, six pages long. Um, and there's lots of description. There's lots of explanations, which some people just want to get to the pattern and get going. I get it. Um, and you can do that in here. But I found a lot of what she said after I got started. I went back and read again. And I, and I understood why she was doing what she was doing. Let's make this bigger. There we go. All right. So she does talk in the pattern here um, about how she came to this kind of formula that she uses. Um, it's pretty basic. And she has some recommendations for some sock yarn. And then she's got some sizes here. So if you're making them for yourself, let's make that. There we go. You're making them for yourself. We're going to measure, but otherwise you could just go by small, medium, large, and extra large if you're making them for somebody else, or you just want to try this out and see how the construction works. Okay. Now, she used a sock yarn, a fingering weight sock yarn, and she used a 3.25 hook. Uh, 3.25 millimeter, three and a quarter millimeter hook. That's the gauge she got. But she also recommends that you could try using other sizes to get a gauge that, that works for you, okay? Um, again, it's the feel is as important as um, the sizing. Okay, so I did this first one. Um, in her recommended, in her 3.25 millimeter, which is, if you go by the letters, it's a D hook. And uh, I was getting pretty close to gauge. I, I was a little, I was a little under, um, but I thought I liked the fabric. It, it felt stretchy, which I liked. This, you know, sock yarn has got some nylon in it, so it does have some stretch. But once I got past the beginning and I slipped it on my foot, I found that it was actually a little too firm. That it had stretch, but it didn't have, it had give actually, but not a ton of stretch. And I decided to try a couple of things. I tried doing, uh, and I played with it a little bit soon in. Instead of doing a single crochet, I tried to doing an extended single crochet. Um, which I can demonstrate for you, which makes the stitch a little taller and opens it up a little. And I also tried a half double crochet, which is something else you can try. And people on Ravelry had done the same thing because they liked the fabric better, okay? Um, and this is where uh, the, her construction of the sock makes that possible because what you're gonna do is we're gonna cast on here once we measure our feet, we're going to do some increasing and we're going to increase until we get to the measurement of our foot. So if we're not quite on gauge, but we have a fabric that we like, that's okay as long as it is the right measurement to fit our foot. And as we work down and work through the foot and get to the heel, we can make some adjustments again there. Okay, so let's measure our foot. And I'm going to try, I should have practiced this a second time. She does describe where she wants you to measure. Thank God I got a pedicure because you get to see my foot. <laughs> Let me swing the camera over here. Hopefully we can see my foot. There it is. Zoom that a little. Let me shove them my shoes on. All right. Ooh, too bright, too bright, too bright. Okay. So I'm one of these people. I've had surgery on both my feet. So my feet actually don't match. So I'm actually kind of excited to make maybe a pair of socks, one different than the other. But where you want to measure 
for this particular pattern, and every pattern is a little different, is at the widest part of your foot, generally across the ball of your foot, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my tape measure. I'm gonna go underneath my foot there. And then I'm gonna measure snugly, not tight, but we don't wanna pull it tight, but we wanna go. So this one measures about nine inches right there, okay? My other foot I know measures bigger. And actually, at the end of the day, I would say my foot measures differently than at the beginning of the day, because I end with my surgeries, I get a lot of swelling in. So you're gonna, oops, sorry, let me get the camera reset. You're gonna take that measurement and write it down. If you're doing these for somebody else, get their measurement. Um, if you've got somebody who doesn't have a uh, a tape measure at home, zoom back out. Um, tell them to get a piece of string if they only have a ruler, because a lot of people don't have a flexible tape measure at all. Have them get a piece of string, wrap it around their foot, mark it where you know where it is, and then hold it up against the ruler and see how long it is. Okay, and they can give you that measurement. That's all we need for this, for this particular sock at this point. All right, let me get my papers back here. All right, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at her pattern here. So a sock needs to fit with negative ease, which means that we want it to stretch when we put it on our foot. We don't want it to just slide right on because it'll slide right off. We want it, it, it needs to be smaller than our actual foot. Um, and in general, socks are made that way. So if your foot measures, like mine measured at um, nine, I want to take off nine inches. I want to take off anywhere from a half to a full inch away from that number to get my finished size. Depends on how um, tight you like your sock, how um, loose you want your sock. I like a, a tighter sock. It just feels better to me to have a, a, a more of a snug sock. So I am going for the medium size, a, a finished size of about eight inches around, okay? So when I go to cast on, I will be following the directions for the medium size. You may, but depending on your size, be making something different. All right. So she talks about how to use the, um, the pattern through here. She talks about at the bottom making your gauge swatch, which is what we're about to do, which means we're going to do the toe. And she talks here about subtracting anywhere from a half to a full inch to get your negative ease. All right. We're going to move on to well, let's get started. So for my size, which is the medium that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna be chaining 14 to get started with the toe. So this is gonna act, you're starting with us as your gauge swatch. And hopefully um, your, your actual toe, if you get a fabric that you like. Now this one that I started, I felt was too firm. So this next one, I've gone up to a three, 0.5 millimeter hook. And I actually did this a little bit on the side and I was much happier with the um, fabric. It was a little, it was overall more stretchy without being too holy, which is always the key. So I'm going to chain. This is not a pattern that you can do a foundation single crochet in. Um, you do have to do the chain because again, we're going to be working into the parts of the chain. So I'll start with a slip knot on the hook and I'm going to chain 14. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Let's just get my yarn over to the right side. 
before we get started. Okay. Now, it's much brighter. Okay. So typically when you work into the chain, you work into the smooth V side of the chain. For this pattern, we're actually gonna flip our chain over and we're gonna work into the bumpy side, okay? And we're gonna go underneath those bumps. So let me zoom in a little closer. So here's what I mean by, here's our smooth side with our Vs. And if I flip it over, we've got these bumps, which is on the, on the back of each of those chains. And that's where we're gonna be making our stitches. We're gonna skip the first bump. And I'm gonna make a single crochet into the second. I'm gonna single crochet all the way down, going into the, the bumps on the back of your chain. So since I chained 14 and I skipped one, the end, I will have 13 single crochets into the back of the chain. Remember, and I think I say this in every video I do, the beginning of your project, first row, or the first couple of rows are always the fiddliest and the most uncomfortable. So don't, don't let this turn you off. It gets much easier once you get a little fabric going. Right. Once you get across here, make sure you've got the right number. We do care about the number of stitches we have um, in getting started. There will be places we can fudge it, and I will point those out along the way. I'm always in favor, excuse me, in favor of fudging it if possible. if it's not gonna really affect your overall pattern. Um, as we work through here, I am gonna be referring to a couple of these parts in the pattern that either were worded awkwardly or um, I just didn't understand until I really worked through it. And I'm gonna give you some pointers on what you can kind of skip and what you, what you need to really, what you really need to do. All right, so I'm gonna count my stitches and make sure I have in fact 13. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. There's my first one that I made into the back. Okay. So now she talks about doing, oh, and she says to mark the last stitch. Okay. So I'm going to put a stitch marker. When you're marking your last stitch, it's never the loop that's on the hook. It's always gonna be the stitch that that loop is coming out of. And slide my stitch marker on there, okay? So that was my 13th stitch on that side. She says to pivot chain and work. I had to Google pivot chain. Um, I had not heard that term before. And I did in fact find some answers. The first thing that comes up is, did you mean Pico? And it is a Pico, it means pivot. And what she means is now we're going to, instead of turning and going back across these in rows, we are actually going to pivot and work into the other side of our beginning chain, okay? Now, she says pivot chain and work 13 single crochets around the top. So I'm gonna pivot. I'm not gonna do a chain one or anything like that. I'm just going to pivot. And if I look here, I need to do 13 across. If you are not sure where to start, here's what I suggest. Let's count. I can see my last one is right here. Let's count back. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. The thirteenth is right where your slip knot is. Okay. So that's where our first one is going to go on this side. Don't use your tail because it's right there. And let's do 13. And you just kind of have to shove it in there. 13 single crochets around. So there's one. Got two. And now we're working underneath both legs of a chain that you're used to doing. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, seven, 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 and I think I missed one, so I'm just going to put an extra one here because I'm going to fudge it. Twelve and thirteen. And we're going to mark this stitch. So on the 13th stitch on each side is marked. What I want to make sure I have is 26 stitches at this point. Okay. So let's make sure I do have that. Okay. So that's my marked one, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13. And I had already counted these, but I'm going to count them again and make sure I ended up in the right spot. So this was my 13th here. I'm going to count that one. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 is right here. I'm not counting this one that's marked because that counted on the other side. So I have 26 stitches all the way around. All right. Now. I, I had suggested that you have two different stitch markers, and here's why. Mm -hmm. These are now our marked stitches, and they are going to be our side stitches. So as we work through the toe, we're going to be increasing on the sides, and these markers are going to help us keep those sides in line so that we're putting the increases in the same place every time. This is a spiral pattern, which means that we're never um, slip stitching our round. So here's where I had started the last time. And we're going to be going around and around. We're not going to be slip stitching and closing off our round and starting a new round. We're just going to continue on in a spiral. Okay. That's the particular design of this sock. Now, she does tell you that the marked stitches are your side stitches. The marker that I just placed right here is now your beginning of round marker which is why I suggest you have two different colors and then mark on your pattern that your whatever color is your beginning of round marker, okay? You don't wanna, as you're working around, you need to know where you started and if they're the same color, you will have a harder time figuring out where you started. Okay, now we're gonna go to increase round one. stitch there. So we're going to leave our markers until we get to them. Okay. When we um, get to the markers, we will be putting a stitch that will remove the marker, put in a stitch and put the marker back. I'll demonstrate that when we get to it. Um, she tells you to work the marked stitch with a single crochet and she's suggesting that we work this stitch right here again. I'm going to suggest that you don't do that. I found that it was bulky. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to work the marked stitch again. I'm going to go into the next stitch and do an increase. So I'm going to do two single crochets 
in the next stitch. Okay, so one and two. And now I'm going to do my regular single crochet until I get to one stitch before the next marked stitch. Let's see. So let's just single crochet all the way down. So when you do an increase round, you're going to be putting, you're going to be increasing a stitch on either side of both of your marked stitches. So every time you do an increase round, you are increasing by a total of four stitches. So we started with 26. At the end of this round, we should have 30. And just uh, these first couple rounds, just take care to go and make sure you are hitting every stitch. You can absolutely fudge it. We did a little fudging this morning. Um, and I'm I'm wondering if I've already made a mistake. I, I'm gonna if I did, we'll fudge it, and I'll show you how I fudge it. And I have so here's my I have one more stitch until my marked stitch. I'm gonna do an increase in there, which means I'm gonna put two singles in that same spot. And now I'm to my marked stitch, which means I'm gonna take out my marker. I'll do one single crochet in that where my marker was. I've got my tail there, so it's clogging things up a little. And then I'm going to put my marker back on that stitch. You can see why we want these easily removable. Now I'm going to do another increase on this side of the marker. So two singles, one in the next stitch, and then single crochet all the way down until one stitch before you're beginning a round marker. So essentially what we're making here is an, it's looks, it'll look like a long oval. And let's get here. And on these first couple rounds, take a second just to count your stitches and make sure that you're on track and that you're recognizing here I'm one stitch before, so I'll make my increase. So at the end of this round, I have increased one stitch on either side of both markers. So I should have 30 stitches. Let's just real quick take a look. One, two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 12, 14, 15 is that marked stitch. So that's half of it, that's positive. And then I should have another 15. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, 10, 12, 14, and then this marked stitch makes 15. So I do have 30 stitches. If you didn't have 30 stitches, if you had missed one, see if you can figure out where you did. And it's not uncommon in that first round because we're really working, um, you know, you've got your slip knot there, you're going onto both sides of the chain. It is gonna curl a little bit like that as you get started, don't worry. If you're close, totally fine. Don't worry, I wouldn't rip it out getting restarted, unless it just looks like, oh, I got big holes. Leave it the way it is, okay? Here's how you can fix it. After you do an increase round, then you just do one round of just single crochet. So if I had found that on the first half, I had maybe missed an increase, I could just add it on that single crochet round. I'm not increasing anywhere else, but on that side, okay? So if I can tell where I missed the increase, add it in on just the plain round. If you've got too many stitches, 
do your plain round. And when it comes to the next, um, the next round, then you can um, skip an increase there, okay? So those are ways for you to fudge it. Okay. Now we're gonna do just a round of single crochet. And I just, I'm gonna stop sharing for one second. I'm gonna pause the recording. Computer's plugged in. Let's go back to sharing our screen. I don't know why you guys put up with me. Okay. So now we're on to just a single crochet round. So I've done my increase here. I'm gonna take out my marked, beginning around marker, do one single crochet there, put the marker back, and just single all the way around. Don't skip any stitches. Sometimes you have to kind of look to see till it's a little bigger, where's my next stitch? And single crochet all the way. So as you're doing this single crochet round, you can start to get the idea, boy, this seems loose. Boy, this seems tight, or I'm not sure. So far it seems okay. If it seems tight or it seems loose, now's the time, take it out and try it with a different hook. Or if you're using an exceptionally thin sock yarn, try something that's a little bit thicker or vice versa. We've got a really thick sock yarn because just because it says fingering weight sock does not mean that every sock yarn is made the same way. Some are definitely thicker than others and behave differently. But if, you're, if you really can't tell yet, if everything seems okay, then just keep going. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to figure out if you like the fabric. But keep that in mind as you're working. Okay, I'm to my marked stitch, take out the marker, make the stitch, put the marker back. Again, you can see why we want those ones that are easily replaceable. So here's a good example. Make sure you are not putting another stitch where your marked stitch was. My next stitch is actually right over here. But when you're turning those corners, when the corners are still tight like this, they're going to get wider as this gets bigger. But in the beginning, they're kind of tight and the stitches are curving and it can be a little confusing. So take the time to double check. So having done this in the uh, smaller hook size the last time, I'm definitely liking this a lot better. It still seems um, not too holy for me. Um, it's got good squish ability so far. Doesn't feel very uh, exceptionally firm and it's got nice stretch. So, um, so far I'm liking this hook size with this. That's the downside to those markers is that sometimes your yarn gets caught up. All right, so again, I'm remembering my blue is my beginning of round. I'm getting around to the end of this round. I would suggest if you're working on this and you're putting it down, try not to stop in the middle of a round. And if you do, write down, have a little scratch paper next to you, what round you're on or what round comes next. If you have a hard time recognizing those stitches, did I just do an increase? No, I didn't. So I'm at the beginning round, I must be ready to do an increase round. But I'm alternating, increase round, regular round. Increase round, regular round. Take out my marked stitch. This is my beginning of round. I just put a single there. Put the marker back. When you're reading the pattern, she, she talks a lot about these marked stitches and moving the markers. Didn't really, it didn't really click with me the first time. I'm ready to increase here. So my next stitch is here, put two single crochets there. Um, and it actually took me reading another pattern that did not move the markers. Um, it's a spiral design, which means our sides are going to shift a little bit 
and I can show you on that first one that I did, they do shift over a little bit. We are increasing on either side of the marker, which helps kind of keep it on its side, keep the sides on the sides and not flipping around. Um, but the design of a spiral is that uh, the beginning isn't always gonna stay in the beginning, okay? And I think that is okay. Um, I wasn't sure, uh, and I read through a couple of other patterns that use these marked stitches. I make the one stitch before, increase, put the two in the same. And I think just doing it just the way we're doing, don't let the wording in there confuse you. Just do a single and put the marker back. And that was one of the, the things that people had said on Ravelry that they found it too wordy that they didn't understand the marked stitches. And I have to say, I was, I just kind of worked through it the first time. And then I was concerned that maybe I should have been moving the markers, but she didn't tell you how to move the markers. So I looked at some other patterns and they leave them right where they are and increase on either side. So I felt like that was enough evidence for me to do it that way. Okay. So you've got an increase round and a straight round where you're just doing singles and marking your stitch side stitches, getting down here to the end. You are gonna do these two rounds, increase, let me stop right there. You're gonna do these two rounds and it's gonna be kind of curly now. As we do more and more, it's gonna end up uh, making this toe shape. Pull this one over because it's a little further along. You're gonna do these two rounds until it is half of this, this distance right here because it's really hard to measure all the way around it. Could, but that would be really hard. But since I'm going for an eight inch um, sort of finished size of my sock, and it'll be the widest part of my foot. I want to do this until it's going to be eight inches around or four inches on either side. She gives you some numbers that you will, on this page right here, for my medium size, repeat these two rounds until you have 42 stitches. Well, on this one, I had 42 stitches, like way down here. I was nowhere near four. I was nowhere near four inches. I had to do many more rounds until I got to my four inches, but it fit on my foot, okay? So that's what I mean by being able to play with the gauge. You can, you can keep doing the increases as you've got a fabric you like, and at this point, I knew I didn't like this fabric, which is why I started with a different hook. But had I liked this fabric, I would have continued on just doing those two increase rounds more than she had suggested until I'd gotten to my four inches, okay? Which means that I would have eight inches all the way around. And the nice thing about it being toe up is I can slip this over my toes, which is how I realized that it felt too firm, okay? It didn't have the right kind of give. So as I work through this one, it already feels a lot more stretchy. And I'm going to lay it across here with a bigger hook. You can see the difference. Actually, I'll put this one on top. So that chain row that we started is right here. It's kind of going to be at the end of our toes. Let's hold them up here. So already it looks, it's bigger. And I'm going to get to that four inches sooner, which is good because the, uh, the pull of my foot is coming up pretty quick here. All right. So your homework is to continue doing these in an increase row and then a row of single crochet, keeping your marked stitches until you get to your um your your size that you have measured. Okay. I'm gonna zoom out and look at the pattern here. Once you get to your, um, either your 42 stitches 
I'm way past 42 stitches. I know I'll be way past 42 stitches, which is fine. Don't, that's my gauge. So don't let that bother you. We're gonna move on to creating the foot, okay? So you're gonna keep the beginning marker to mark the start of your rounds, but you'll be able to get rid of the second side marker, okay? Once it's the right width, then you're just gonna be doing single crochet in a spiral. You'll be able to get rid of this marker, but keep your beginning of round marker because we do wanna know that we've completed a whole round, all right? Um, and we're gonna do that until your sock is about two and a half inches shorter than the total length of your foot, which means from toe to the back of the heel. The easiest way to do that is to, um, it's kind of hard to stand on a tape measure and get an accurate measurement. I suggest you stand on a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard and pencil mark the top of your toe and pencil mark the back of your heel and then measure that distance, okay? If you know you have an, a, a different shaped foot, that you have a really big heel or a really narrow heel or whatever, take that into account. You can measure where your, where your heel starts, um, but that's where we're gonna work to. And then we'll work on the heel flap beginning next class, okay? So that's your homework. Do your toe to the right size and then work until it's about two and a half inches shorter. If you're not quite sure, you do it till it's three inches shorter and, and see where we go. Keep sliding it onto your foot, okay? Um, and making sure that it's fitting. If, it, if your feet start to get really narrow after the ball of your foot, you feel like it's gonna be too loose there, you could do uh, a, little, a little decreasing. Um, I wouldn't do too much decreasing because we do wanna be able to get our foot in and out of there, okay? But play with it a little, and if it doesn't work, rip it out and go back. You can do that because you know what dimension you need to get to, okay? Rocky, do you have any questions? Uh, no. <laughs> Is there anything I forgot to say that I didn't, that I said this morning? I don't think so. Uh, no, I think you did. Nope, I think you covered everything. Okay. Yep. Um, like the fabric, um, trust mm -hmm. it, you know, it's, uh, if you don't like the way it looks, this now's the time to figure it out and try a different hook size or a different yarn or a combination thereof. okay? So I'm gonna keep working on this and I'm okay. hoping I'm still gonna like it. And if I don't, I'm gonna play with it a little. Maybe I'm gonna okay. change my hook size. Maybe I'm gonna change my stitch. Ooh, right, I wanna see yours, hold on. Let's spotlight you because people might wanna see that. Oh. Hold on. Ooh, that looks great. So Rocky's using, hold it up one more time. Rocky's using a self-striping yarn. There you go. Which mm -hmm. actually makes it rather interesting, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get a little bit bored of my orange. So what I'm considering doing is making my toe a solid color and then switching to a self-striping yarn. There you go. What do I you have that for, for the heel. For the, heel. for the heel, she's gonna switch colors on her heel. So there's definitely room to play with this, all right? Um, if you don't love that single crochet stitch, try a half double crochet. As long as the dimensions and the fabric fit your foot and you like it, it's gonna work. When we get to the heel, the only requirement is that we have an even number of stitches, all right? And that's easy enough to do. We can take one away, add one if we need to at that point. Um, so if you end up with an odd number, don't worry about it. We'll take care of it right before we start the heel. We just have to have an even number. All right. Oh. See everybody next month. Call or come in if you've got questions. And let's let's not be skeptics. Let's make crochet. All righty. Bye. Bye bye.